Welcome everyone. Now we have another multivariable function. We want to find the domain of this function and we're going to sketch the domain in the xy plane. So let's uh, see what, what's the domain of this particular function is. So since it is ln of x squared plus y squared minus 49, we know that our knowledge ln of this expression has to be always bigger than zero. So we're simply going to take this expression x squared plus y squared minus 49. We want this to be bigger than zero. So then you solve for it by um, kind of adding 49 to both sides. You will have x squared plus y squared is bigger than 49. So we know this is a circle of radius 7. So if you were to draw it, then in the xy plane, your domain would look like this. So here is your xy plane. And our domain will be set of points in this plane uh, such that as long as we're outside of this circle, so let's suppose this is seven and this is seven. So it's a circle center at zero, zero, radius seven. So here we go. The boundary is not part of the domain because we cannot have zero in, in for the input of ln. So that's, uh, so it's not really a perfect circle, but hopefully you can draw better. So it looks something like this, and we're going to shade in everything outside of it. So all of this will be the domain. So this is the domain of this function. So if you were to write it out, you will say the domain of f, it's going to be the set of points x comma y in R2, such that as long as x squared plus y squared is bigger than 49. So that will be the domain of this particular function. Example here, we're given another function f of x, y, which is one over the square root of nine minus 25 x squared minus 25 y squared. And we want to answer the following parts based on this function. So uh, first thing you wanna do is again, make sure the function is defined. So let's figure out the domain. So this function is undefined when this is, um, negative so and also we don't want it to be zero either so we have to be very careful on this the so square roots we want it to be non-negative numbers and then also want to be not zero so we simply take our denominator just the expression under the square root so we have 9 minus 25 x squared minus 25 y squared we want this to be strictly bigger than zero and now we solve this inequality. So we can go ahead and um, move the nine to the other side. So we have negative 25 X squared minus 25 Y squared bigger than nine, negative nine since we subtracted nine. And now I can get rid of all the negative and divide by negative uh, 25 as well. So that's gonna give us X squared plus Y squared, now less than, so remember to switch the direction of your inequality every time you divide or multiply by a negative number. So we have nine over 25. Now this is also a circle, but here we're gonna look at the interior of the circle, so inside. So as long as our X and Y values are less than nine over 25. So if you're to sketch the domain of this particular function, here's how it's going to look like. Suppose this is our X, Y plane, and we want the circle of radius three over five. So um, uh, again, the boundary is not included. So let's suppose this is the circle we're looking at. The boundary is not there. So sorry for the drawing, it's a little off. Let's do it again. So here is the circle. Again, the boundary is not part of the domain since we have a strict inequality and we want everything less than that number. So if this is, three over five, then we want the interior of it to all of this. So our domain is this interior region. So that's the domain of this function. So let's go ahead and write this down. So our domain answer to part one, the domain of this function f, it's going to be the set of points x, y in R2 such that as long as x squared plus y squared is less than nine over 25. So that's gonna be the domain of this. So this is the answer to one. 
Now let's also think about the range. So we know the range is in 3D, so we're looking for the Z values. What are the possible Z values for this function? So if you um, look at it, the lowest value we can get for this function is when X and Y are zero. So if you plug in zero here and zero here, you're going to get one over square root of nine. So when X and Y are zero, and this will give you one over three. So the minimum value we can attain for this particular function on the Z is gonna be zero. So we have zero, sorry, not zero, when X and Y are zero, so it's gonna be one third. And then as you plug in more points from the domain, you're just gonna get uh, more values for Z, so we can say infinity. So the range would be from one third to infinity. Now for the next part, we're going to discuss uh, if the domain is open region, closed region, both or neither. Well, since the boundary points are not in the domain, this is an open region. So we can say that the answer to part C or three is going to be an open region because our region is the interior of this disk and it does not contain the boundary points. And the last portion of this question we want to answer is if the domain is bounded or unbounded. Well, by definition, we say a region is bounded if it lies inside a disk of finite radius. So you can draw a disk of a finite radius around this region and the region is contained within that disk. So therefore it is a bounded region. So we're gonna say that our region is bounded. You can bound it by finite um, with the finite radius of a disk. Okay, I hope this makes sense. I'll see you next time. Take care.